Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats have won their negotiations with Donald Trump and the Republicans over the COVID relief bill, and they are refusing to accept it and take yes for an answer. And you want to know how I know this is true? Jake Tapper of CNN said, quote, you could take yes for an answer. So we know the White House has moved closer to your position on a lot of issues. CNN twice now is is roasting Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats saying you are the one blocking COVID relief. Donald Trump has caved. He's given in. Fine, get it done. And you said no. The Democrats want you to suffer. They're like a little kid watching ants in the magnifying glass laughing <laughs> as you suffer because they don't want Trump to win. What? You mean and give Trump a victory? No way. From the blaze, they say CNN host Jake Tapper grilled Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Sunday over why she continues to block passing additional coronavirus related aid that millions of Americans desperately need, all while blaming the White House. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows revealed on CNN State of the Union Sunday that Pelosi continues to move the goalposts on COVID-19. We have continued to make offer after offer after offer, and Nancy continues to move the goalposts. And as you know, we're up to 1.9 trillion. I personally have talked to the leader multiple times. I have talked to senators multiple times. And at the end of the day, it was the Democrats who just last week who said they weren't going to support a $500 billion deal. So they said no to some relief coming to Americans. Later in the show, Tapper grilled Pelosi over why she continues to stall economic relief, highlighting the fact that the Trump administration has attempted to compromise with House Democrats. So we know that the White House has moved closer to your position on a lot on lots of issues. Coronavirus testing, contact tracing strategy, unemployment benefits, local government. Tapper said before getting cut off by Pelosi. In response, Pelosi claimed Republicans have not attempted to compromise. And also this and also same thing. They keep moving the goalposts. They every time they say we move the goalposts, that means they're projecting what they did. Pelosi claimed. I'm sorry when CNN is roasting you and calling you out twice because Blitzer and now Tapper are doing it. I think it's fair to say, like, it must really be bad for Democrats if CNN's willing to call it out. The House Speaker then attempted to steer the conversation away from the COVID relief legislation. Tapper rejected the spin. But it seems like they, they keep moving closer and closer, he said, of Republicans. I get that you're waiting for it on paper, but it just seems like you're winning. I mean, that's what it seems like to me. I'm looking at all of the things the White House is moving forward to your position on, and it seems like you could take yes for an answer. Pelosi tried to continue blaming Republicans for the lack of a deal, but Tapper quickly reminded her that even Democrats are imploring their leadership to make a deal. One of your own members, Congressman Congressman Max Rose, said this week that the Democratic Party needs to learn to a certain extent how to declare victory and go home. You're getting a lot of messages from Democrats saying this is good enough. We need to say yes. Nancy Pelosi isn't interested in helping you. She's not interested in getting you what you need to survive. She doesn't want to give Trump a win. This is what happens when Trump derangement is in government. Max Rose props. But please spare me. You jumped on the impeachment bandwagon like a moron chasing after Pelosi. Maybe now you've finally grown a spine, and I can respect that. And Max Rose does seem to have one. I've seen some great videos from him. He really does just say it. I can respect that. But it's about time these moderate Democrats started saying, you know what? It's Pelosi. She's the problem. Get rid of her. The American people need relief right now. It's, they say more spikes are coming. Things are going to get worse, whatever. Nancy Pelosi has Trump derangement and it's terminal to the point where she's like, I refuse to let Trump have any victories. She wants to strangle the American people out because she wants Trump to lose. And this is why Trump deserves to win. They say, indeed, last week, the White House pushed a nearly two trillion dollar coronavirus relief bill, which included many Democratic requests making clear they want to compromise before Election Day. But Pelosi won't do it, even when Democrats say, please do this. Ro Khanna said she she should do it. More than one Democrat in the House has already said, Pelosi, get the deal done. She doesn't care. She doesn't care about the 25 or so million people who are suffering and in need. And I'm surprised that even CNN is willing to call this out because it is it is that bad. I mean, CNN would love to roast Trump all day. 
And now we're seeing the true depravity of people like Pelosi. I tell you what, Democrats, if you win the House, do not make her speaker again. She's never going to get voted out because the way just the way the system is, people go in and check D on the box. She's got to go. I'll tell you what, man, I don't care for any of these people. The two Americas financing the Trump and Biden campaigns. I'm a fan of George Carlin. Remember George Carlin? I'm sure most of you do. If you don't, you got to go watch his stuff. I remember some of his really great stand up that I used to watch when I was growing up. These people, these millionaires, they don't care about you. They're millionaires. Stop electing them. Go watch Carlin talk about it. He was a liberal. And now people are going to elect Joe Biden, who is being propped up by the wealthy elites. Okay, you say to me, but Tim, Donald Trump is the wealthy elite. There's a big difference between people who want to fund the guy who will line their pockets with gold and the guy whose pockets are lined with gold, who is using that gold and losing it. Take a look at this story from the New York Times. This, this, this chart is amazing. Amount raised in millions by median household, in, in, median household income of zip codes. Trump's donors overwhelmingly come from less wealthy zip codes. And it goes way down as the wealth, the, the wealth of the zip code goes up. Joe Biden does as well. But he's got a spike here in median household income above $250,000. Donald Trump called this out at the debates. You're the guy funded by Wall Street. We don't take that money. Donald Trump raised half what Hillary raised, spent nearly half what Hillary spent in the last election cycle, and he won. Trump has got problems. I'll say it every single time, but he is not the candidate of Wall Street. He is not the candidate of the big tech billionaires who would sell you out to make a buck. He's not. So complain to me about him all you want. I'm sorry, man. It's Pelosi who is blocking what the American people need. It is Joe Biden who represents the billionaires. And where's Bernie Sanders? Sold us out in two seconds. As soon as they opened the door and said, welcome to the Millionaires Club, Bernie. Come on in. He said, OK. To be fair, Trump is a billionaire. I know. I know. I'm sick of the elitism. I like populism. I do fear populism without meritocracy, however. Just because someone fights for the will of the people doesn't mean the will, of the, the will of the people is a good thing. People sometimes don't know what, what needs to happen. And sometimes things aren't publicly available to the people for security reasons. It makes it really, really tough. But I err on the side of we need a president that listens to what the American people need and want, but has the skills to get the job done and avoid pitfalls that could hurt this country. I don't know if Donald Trump is that man, to be completely honest. Look, we've seen good things from him. I'll accept the great economy. I'll accept the peace deals and the withdrawal. But it doesn't mean everything he's done is completely good. I wouldn't know. I only have my issues that are important to me, which is the challenge. The president needs to represent everyone so he can look at the issues I care about. He can take action on them. And I'll say, all right, I accept these things. I like them. Joe Biden doesn't seem to care at all. Joe Biden, for 47 years, milked the system for all it's worth making himself very wealthy and his brother and his son also very wealthy. Middle class working Joe with his son getting $83,000 per month on the board of an energy company he had no business being on. That's Biden Inc. The Democrats are the preferred party of the wealthy crony establishment elites, the billionaires. They probably saw the tides of coming during Occupy Wall Street. Vox ran an article in 2016 that said just this that Democrats have become the preferred party of the very wealthy for the first time in a long time. And it probably has to do with Occupy. They said, if you want to have power and be a billionaire, support the left and they'll ignore you. And now I see even people on Twitter who claim to be, you know, anti-establishment, you know, socialist defending Joe Biden. I'll tell you what, I don't care if you hate Donald Trump. I will ask any one of these leftists, do me a favor can you please say that Biden and Trump are both garbage and they won't do it? If you really hate Trump, you really think he's the worst, but you really do oppose foreign intervention, interference in our elections and crony corporate capitalism, then tell me that Joe Biden is trash as well. Tell me the rest of the Democrats are. But so many won't do it. 
I have no problem saying that the Republicans are mostly garbage and so are the Democrats and Donald Trump barely gets by for me. Joe Biden is trash. Nancy Pelosi is garbage. There's very few politicians I actually like. Isn't that the easiest position to take? I hate everybody. I don't, though. I think Rand Paul's fantastic, by the way. Uh, Rand Paul, I think Tulsi, Go- Tulsi Gabbard was fantastic, though I guess she's, she's leaving. There's very few politicians I actually like. I feel like most people feel this way. They're all trash. But for some reason, you have these tribalists that will absolutely defend all of these Democrats. I don't know why. They are blocking your COVID relief and laughing in your face about it. And they are fun. They're being funded by the Wall Street millionaires and billionaires. Bernie, where'd you go, buddy? This used to be your thing. Now you're all on board. A spine would be nice. I get them all out. I'll say it a million times. I don't care. Every single one of them. Get them out. I understand. Look, I like Rand Paul. Thomas Massey is pretty cool, too. There's a handful of them. Just all the incumbents, just just, bye bye. We'll start over. We'll figure it out. It doesn't mean it's going to be fixed. But you know what? These people who have made careers, I'm just not a fan of it. Someone made a really interesting point about we need statesmen, states people, not politicians. And that's why I think Rand Rand Paul mostly gets a pass for me. I think that guy's actually, he actually tries. And there's a handful on uh, on the Democratic side. Uh, My my respect to Max Rose calling out uh, Nancy Pelosi as well as Ro Khanna. I think there are some good politicians on both sides, but very few and far between. We need some kind of we, we need something different. And just electing a new president isn't change. We need to get rid of the incumbents. Please just vote them out. I don't care if it's a progressive. Get rid of Nancy Pelosi. She can she can lose. She's 80. OK, give me give me a 30 year old progressive. I'll take it. At least it won't be the same crony establishment elites. I'll leave it there. I got one more segment coming up in a couple minutes. Stick around and I will see you all shortly.